Molecules of Life by Marissa Lipti. We as humans eat food every day, but what is the purpose of that food? We eat food in the building blocks of that food we weave together to make living things. This person's body was made from the building blocks that came from food like this hot dog. These organic macromolecules are the chemicals of life. Compounds compose a more than one type of element, containing carbon that are typically found in living things. There are four groups of organic macromolecules. They are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. A carbohydrate is called an organic compound because it is made up of a long chain of carbon atoms. Carbohydrate is just a fancy way of saying sugar. The different types of carbohydrates all have the word saccharide in them. Monosaccharides are the simplest form of carbohydrates. They include sugar such as glucose and glucose. Desaccharides are formed from two monosaccharides. They are also known as sugars such as sucrose and lactose. When several carbohydrates combine, it is called polysaccharide, poly meaning many. Hundreds of sugars can be combined in a branch chain. These chains are also known as starches. You can find starches in foods such as bread, cereal, pasta, rice, potatoes, beans, and chestnuts. Carbohydrates provide your body with energy. The chemical energy in sugars is the main source of energy for most living things. When you hear the word lipids, you should think of fats, but lipids aren't just fats. They are also known as oils, steroids, and waxes. So if you pick out some real wax, that's a lipid too. There are two kinds of fats, unsaturated and saturated. The only difference between the two are saturated fats have at least one double bond in one of the fatty acids, and saturated have no double bonds. A double bond is a chemical bond in which two pairs of electrons are shared between two atoms. The human body stores fat as an energy source. When you have extra sugars in your system, your body converts them into fats. When it needs extra fuel, your body breaks down the fat and uses the energy. For one molecule of sugar, it only give, gives a small amount of energy. A fat molecule gives off many times more. Proteins are made up of amino acids. A protein can be very complex, but basically it is a long chain of amino acids all twisted around like a knot. As proteins are built, they begin as a straight chain of amino acids, which is called the primary structure. To have a secondary structure, the original chain just begins to twist. Tertiary makes step three, which is when the amino acid chains begin to fold even more. Quaternary is the fourth and final phase in the creation of a protein. Several amino acids from the tertiary structures fold together and interwind in and out of each other. Antibodies are formed by the proteins to help prevent infection, illness, and disease. Proteins provide structure. In cells, an example is collagen, a structural protein found in various connective tissues. This provides the framework that holds your ligaments together and the tendons attaches muscles to those bones. Another function of protein is to transport of certain molecules. Protein is also sometimes used to store certain molecules. Enzymes are proteins that speed up chemical reactions in the body. Body processes are also influenced by hormones, which are proteins that regulate the activity of cells or organs. Hormones are like chemical messengers that carry an order from one part of your body to another. Nucleic acids are long chains made from many smaller molecules called nucleotides. A nucleotide consists of a phosphate, sugar, and nitrogenous base. A polynucleotide is many nucleotides bonded together. There are two types of nucleic acids that are central to our life. These are DNA and RNA. DNA gives your body instructions like a recipe for everything it needs to do to grow, develop, and live. It contains instructions necessary to construct other components of cells, such as proteins. mRNA carries the protein plant, in other words, 
blueprints from a cell's DNA to its ribosome, which are the machines that drive protein synthesis. tRNA then carries the appropriate amino acids into the ribosome for inclusion in the new protein. Now the next time you eat that hot dog, you'll realize when it goes into you what it's doing.